Today on This is Gravel, we talk about fat. Fat bikes. Fat bikes. We talk with JP. We talk about getting out there and enjoying the snow. And of course, today we have a special guest with us, Adam Blake from Gravel City Adventure and Supply Company. Welcome to This is Gravel. I'm Neil. Alongside of me, Adam Blake. What's up, Adam? How's it going, Neil? Doing good. How you doing, man? Doing very well. Happy to be here. Yeah, what have you been up to? Uh, been uh, staying on the gravel, getting some bike packing in still. Um, really dabbling in colder weather and colder temperatures to see and push the limit of uh, what I can sleep in, what I can be comfortable in. Uh, got a great bike packing community here in Emporia, so there's new people coming around all the time. Awesome. It's something I've definitely thought about looking into. Um, I just, I'm nervous about it, but I, I love talking to you about it, getting to know more about bike packing. Um, I think every time I'm up there, I think we have at least some little conversation about it, about getting out there and doing that. Yeah, I will uh, talk about bike packing, uh, one of my favorite facets of cycling right now. Yeah, it seems like it's fun just getting out, going at a slow pace, enjoying each other's company sitting around a fire. Um, seems like a good, good time. I'm looking actually forward, hopefully, to getting out for somebody's uh, birthday backpacking here in a couple weeks. This guy. That guy. March 3rd. March 3rd. By the way, earlier, I believe Matt was down at the shop talking to you a little bit about fat bikes, and I think we got some video of that. A little bit about fat bikes, yep. Uh, Matt came down, and we just went over some of the basics. You know, it is a facet of cycling that has seen a lot of development over a few years uh, and excited to see more and more people racing fat bikes on gravel and things like the Dirty Kanza and other events. Uh, they've got fat bike classes in gravel events, so all this gravel and fat bike stuff ties together. Awesome. Let's take a look at that. Today we're going to get off the beaten path even a little further than gravel and talk about fat bikes. Uh, Prevalent in snow and starting up in Alaska, uh, they made a mainstream debut around 2006 with Quality Bicycle Products and Surly brand. Uh, Salsa quickly jumped on the bandwagon and we've seen as much progression with this style of bike as any facet of cycling. Uh, designed primarily where flotation and traction is key, so snow, sand, and even dirt, uh, these tires excel on that. Based around initially a 26 by 3.8 platform, we've seen tire sizes increase to five inches and even greater, and now seeing a prevalency of 27 and a half by four. That's gonna give you a little better roll and make a bike more versatile. These bikes are no longer just for sand and snow, so any region in the country can see fun and benefits from a fat bike. Great trail bikes as we've tailored geometry. Um, these bikes handle single track really well and are a true four season fat bike. Tires are probably the most important part of a fat bike and tailoring your tire to the conditions you're gonna ride in makes your ride that much more enjoyable. It started in, in the Continental 48 with the Surly Endomorph and has progressed to multiple manufacturers in multiple sizes with multiple tread patterns. Brands like 45 North and Maxxis are leading the way in fat tires now. If you have any questions on a fat tire or just want to get on a test ride and smile, come on down to Gravel City Adventure and Supply Company and we can set you up with a test ride. Thanks Matt for stopping down to the shop. Uh, it's always good to talk fat bikes. Um, I know that right now I'm headed up to Levistro, Wisconsin in about two weeks for a groomed fat bike trail race. Awesome. Uh, enduro style, so it's like a relay three-hour race. Wow. Uh, going up with a couple local guys and uh, a couple other friends that I haven't seen in a while. 
So really excited. I've got a Salsa Mukla this year. Um, one of my favorite fat bikes on a five inch tire platform. So plenty of tire. I'm gonna say it's a sweet looking bike. I know I've seen it. And those wide tires just to me are just, they, they make me drool. Uh, all, all it does is stream to me, get out on snow, get out on snow. And this year, Kansas hasn't had any snow and it's killing me because we've had this cold weather. I mean, uh, today's beautiful, it's almost 40 degrees, but we've had a bunch of, uh, of temperatures down around zero, single digits and no snow. And, and I, 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 if we had that snow, I think that's, that's what it would take for me to pull that trigger. You think you can conjure up some snow, Adam? We'll see what we can do. We'll pull some strings. I, I would definitely encourage people to think outside the box with a fat bike though. It's something that really reduces limitations. So whether it's snow, which they initially kind of were developed for, we're seeing significant geometric changes in the bikes to make them ride as four season fat bikes uh, much better. Um, bigger tire diameters now are rolling better on gravel, um, much more fun in trails, and just a ball to, to ride. Pressure's as low as three to four PSI on snow. So it sounds like it'd be really comfortable. And, and I always think of them riding on snow because it's always seeing those pictures on Instagram of folks getting out there, riding on snow. And I know Matt's got some video for us. He talked with JP uh, about riding up at the Arrowhead 135, uh, which he won. Uh, those pictures, I mean, I don't know if you saw any of those on Facebook or, or Instagram, but boy, those guys are out there in the snow, uh, sub-zero temperatures, uh, and it looks like a blast, but a really cold blast. Yeah, Warriors, snow racing is no small feat uh, at any distance, especially something like the Arrowhead 135, uh, Sestina, or Tascobia, uh, with multiple distances. It's uh, a lot of training, a lot of gear testing, and JP does it as well as anyone. Right, let's take a look at that video. Thanks for coming on our show today. And first off, congrats on your Arrowhead 135 win a couple weeks ago. What was that like? Uh, it was great. It was, it was really just another day ride. Actually, half a day since it was 13 hours. The day is 24. Uh, but good fun. It was the sixth time for me on the trail, so I'm pretty familiar with it. Um, and everything just kind of worked out. And I ended up with a, a good day and a clean ride. So I guess that's how I ended up uh, at the casino first. Well, Jay, one thing we kind of know about you is you specialize in endurance cycling, you know, and a lot of the events we've seen you at. How did you get started with endurance cycling? Oh, gosh. Um, this could be a long interview if I get too <laughs> deep here. Uh, but really, you know, I've been endurance cycling for over, endurance racing for over 20 years, um, pushing 25 years, actually. Um, one of my first events in my early 20s was 500 kilometers long. So, and I've raced endurance running and done multi-sport and have always used the bike as my tool for training and things like that. And it's just been my love even when I was multi-sporting. And then um, back in about 2005 or so, I kind of only was cycling then and concentrating on 100 mile events and then 24 hour events and then once i discovered kind of multi-day events in 2006 uh i haven't looked back and that's really what um drives me it's what i'm passionate about i love kind of being in the outdoors um i love the other skills beyond cycling um, as far as taking care of myself and camping and just all that stuff. And, uh, there's a lot of mental challenges along the way. And I really enjoy trying to fit out and challenge myself that way. Really not just a physical game past, uh, say the first day, it's more mental more than anything. So, um, and from there, it's, it's just been an amazing ride, uh, no pun intended, but, um, to be where I'm at today and, uh, making, a living in the cycling industry, just being uh, JP as a brand or companies and things is, is certainly something, a place I never thought I'd be. Yeah, very cool, Jay. And talking about your passion there a little bit, one thing you've started doing more of is you host a gravel race and you also host Fat Pursuit and some training camps. How did you get started really doing those events? Yeah, it was always, I was sharing. And so 
and I love where I live and where I train and where I have learned here, my backyard. So I just wanted to share all this. And uh, the best way to do it is by offering events to others and giving them that challenge and offering them skills and just my progression in life. And as an athlete, um, the camp started to make more sense. And I'm just seeing uh, all these categories getting more popular. Um, but somebody they they need the skills kind of and so it's it's really been fun and really rewarding to offer uh the events and the camp and um it's helping me learn a lot and it's helping me teach uh because you learn from others um so it's been super fun so fat pursuit has been going on for uh, i guess five years now and we do a short distance 60k short distance but uh still super challenging and then we do a long distance 200s weekend um, and then our gravel race is uh, Gravel Pursuit. Uh, that's September 29th, and we offer a 60 and 120 mile event there. Um, and then uh, we'll keep pursuing our camps for sure because there was a lot of interest there, um, and everything's just been working out really well. Well, that's great to hear, Jay. One thing that really, I don't know if it surprised me when I saw Fat Pursuit and watching the photos and all the social media going along with it is, one of the things I had to do was boil water. Can you go into a little bit more on that for me? Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, Winter Ultras traditionally would just give out a, uh, a gear list, and people would just kind of buy the gear and carry it. Never really used it, and they didn't know how to use it. Um, and so I wanted to do something different. And uh, since I love to teach and see education and help people, I was like, well, instead of just packing that stove Let's learn how to use it. So we're gonna we're gonna test you, and uh, we we've seen a lot from that, and it's awesome and super rewarding. When I'm looking on social media and the people that are like preparing to come, they're actually practicing boiling their water. And um, there's nothing against the other events and things that are out there, but um, a lot of these other events they just carry the gear list. And actually, I was in Alaska one time for the Iditarod, and um, I actually seen somebody pulled out a stove that was basically still in its packaging. Um, and at that point I was like, wow, um, some education needs to be had. Uh, that, that's crazy, but I really think that's a cool side of it. And obviously like with what we do here at Gravel Guru, spreading that education and learning how to use the tools. But uh, speaking of Alaska, it looks like if you're following your social media, you're getting ready for another trip. I am. So I leave next Monday and, uh, or next Wednesday. And so they did our odd trail invitational. It starts on the, February 25th. This will be my 10th year on the trail. Uh, I'm going to challenge myself and try to make it to Nome, which is uh, the full Iditarod Trail, 1,000 miles. Uh, kind of an anniversary year for me, I guess. Um, and I'm super excited for it. Uh, I don't always, I'm a, I travel a lot and I'm pretty busy, so I don't get a, I don't prepare like I used to and have months in advance. And so like, you know, I got home from traveling on Monday and it's just like immediate like tunnel focus because I kind of have like one week to prepare for all this and put together 12 different food drops and sort out my bike and just, uh, but that's just kind of how I operate and I'm kind of used to that um, because I think if we're prepared too far in advance, then we just kind of sit around and wait and we're nervous. So I really only have to be ready um, at two o'clock on the 25th because that's when the race starts and I'll be getting prepared until that final minute. Um, but it's super exciting. Yeah, that's very cool to watch you go through this. And I highly recommend to anybody that's on social media, check out JP's Instagram. He's posting photos of getting the packs ready and stuff. But what is your kind of go-to bike you're going to use this year on the Iditarod? Yeah, this is kind of funny. This is, uh, so this year I'm going to take the Salsa Blackboro. And that's a mid-tail bike. Um, and that's a new bike by them. And I just seen some potential with it beyond what maybe others are thinking. And I'm very, I became very curious as I was riding it this year on like, just what it would be like taking it to Alaska. The stability of it is amazing. Um, the organization I'll have with my gear attached to the bike is, is going to be just so, so much easier for me. Everything's just going to be super accessible. Um, and I really do think that, uh, it, it, we'll see. But uh, I'm anticipating it could be the right tool for the job, even beyond just a traditional sized bike. And uh, 
there's only one way to find out and that's by doing it. <laughs> very cool. It, you know, the photos of you put the stove on it and where you've got everything packed are just very cool. Maybe it's just me geeking out, looking at all the bags and stuff on it, but a very cool ride. Now, Jay, what would you say to anybody that is going out there to compete in their first maybe winter ultra? What type of advice would you give them? You know, I would just say, you know, know how to use your equipment, um, practice winter camping, and just have the patience. And, uh, you know, lately I've been saying, like, do your work. And um, that means, like, take care of yourself. And, and don't wait for things to be too late. If you're cold, make yourself warm. You have a jacket, put it on. If you're starting to sweat, it's time to vent. And these are the things that are going to make your experience better. And but they also give you something to do. And people are always asking me, oh, you must be bored out there. And honestly, there's so much running through my brain all the time. And I just, there's this work to be done and just paying attention to your body and things. And I think that's most important. And don't really get caught up in somebody else's uh, ride or um, don't set your goals too high. And just, you know, finishing should be your number one goal and finishing, uh, let's just say, without frostbite and injury free. Very good information there, Jay. Now, converting over to gravel from snow, maybe a little bit warmer climate. Are we going to see you on any gravel events this year? Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, it's kind of funny. As soon as I get back uh, from Alaska at the end of the month, at the end of the month of March, um, I'm actually heading down to, uh, to Arizona, and I'm going to be uh, – I collaborated with uh, the Cyclist Menu, and so I'll be a part of a gravel camp down there on March 25th. And actually, it's a cool little camp because we're actually doing an intro to bikepacking as well. So it's a good training event uh, as well as just a little insight to bikepacking. And we'll kind of spend one night out as well. So uh, that's going to be a lot of fun. And it'll be kind of interesting to go from uh, the cold of Alaska immediately down to the desert. Um, but, yeah, we're going to be um, – I say we. So Tracy and I will be doing DKXL this year. And we had a discussion last week. And we're actually going to do it on the tandem. So uh, that'll be pretty fun. I'm looking forward to that. Um, I always like to be a part of DK. And just to kind of be a part of that event is kind of special. And Tracy and I will share it as well on a tandem. Uh, we really enjoy that. And I'll be I'll be hopping into some other stuff last minute. But I just have a pretty big calendar and just sort things out. But uh, I, I love the gravel racing as well and just that, that community. Um, so we'll see where I end up. Very cool there. Um, yeah, the DKXL is getting a lot of attention, and hopefully here in the next month we'll get a special show just on the DKXL. Talk to Leland and Jim about how they've put that together and whatnot. But, JP, where can people find you on social media, check out your content, and uh, where can they find you? Yeah, for sure. So I have an Instagram account, and it's just JP Rivera. I also uh, do some stuff on Facebook. with uh, I have an athlete account there as well, so you can check me out uh, in the midst. Uh, I do a whole have a website that's getting ready to be relaunched with a uh, calendar of things that I have going on with my events and gravelpursuit.com and fatpursuit.com. And uh, uh, we do a lot through Salsa as well as a major partner. Okay. Very cool, JP. And I'll make sure all those links for your social media and website are in the show notes into your event. So, hey, thanks for coming on the show today. Yeah. Thanks you, Matthew. And thank you for all you do for the community. Great video. Thanks, JP, for coming on with us. Uh, we got some social media, too, so Matt, show us what we got. Thanks, Adam and Neil. And here's today's social media. First up, we've got Alex. Alex took on the Rock Cobbler out in California this weekend. Bruce Brown went out on 10 miles of snow-covered gravel roads on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. That looks like fun on the fat bike. Bruno went on a beautiful ride in Portugal with some friends. Chris Sutton caught a break in the weather, toured the McKenzie River area in the Oregon Cascades. Greg was out in Corson, South Dakota, 10 degrees with snow-packed gravel. Jacob was out on a land-run training route on the Kirsch Roads east of Guthrie. Broke a derailleur hanger in the group, but there's not even mud, yet. Our friend Louise down in Costa Rica went on a bikepacking trip this weekend, Said it was a wild place. Snakes, scorpions, frogs, bugs, big cats, and crocodiles. You name it. 107 degrees Fahrenheit and 80% humidity. Nick Little ventured down to Florida for a nice change of scenery on his ride this weekend. And Paul was out exploring Thailand. As always, make sure you tune into all of our social media, our Twitter page, Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook, and post your photos using the hashtag, ThisIsGravel. 
Awesome, Matt. Thanks for showing us those pictures, all those folks out there riding, enjoying the, uh, the weather and the good times. Uh, make sure that you're following us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. Uh, also make sure that you are hashtagging your pictures. This is gravel. Uh, we love seeing them. I know Matt, myself, Bobby, uh, love going around, seeing those pictures. Adam as well, um, uh, that you guys are doing out there. Uh, I know I enjoy seeing what others, like I say, are riding. Uh, like I said, the guys with the fat bikes, getting to see them up there, uh, doing that in the cold weather. It makes me want one. I just wish we had the snow here. Adam, hey, man, thanks for coming on this week, being with us. If you guys ever need anything, see this guy down at Gravel City. He has all the answers for you. Um, I mean, really does. Uh, he's helped me out a lot with single speed. He used to do single speed in. He loves riding the fat bike. <clears throat> so Adam really has the answers for you. So if you have questions, uh, you can always find him down there at Gravel City. Thank you, buddy. Adam, thanks for coming on, man.